I'm online looking at articles about radiation coming from Fukushima, and I'm in Southern California and Los Angeles. People are freaking out about the fact that you can't go to the beach, don't touch the sand, maybe don't get in the water, definitely don't eat the fish. It's all so confusing, I have no idea what to think, so we got this thing, it's called a Geiger counter, it measures radiation levels. Enough of this bullshit, I'm gonna try and figure it out for myself. I'm out at the Venice Pier, right by the Venice Boardwalk. How are you doing? Point one zero. You just save. Let's go ask some of these fishermen. I mean, they're out here all day long. They're fishing. They're probably eating the fish, I would imagine. Yeah. But I mean, they're staying at the beach all day, if they're concerned. Catch anything? Yeah. Can I, do you mind if I interview you? Um, you can interview him. I just want, I'm just wondering about what, like, what kind of fish are you guys, what are you we looking for? Oh, you got a big crab. That's what we Whoa. Yeah, that's what we're trying to catch. Are you going to eat it? Yeah. It's good out from out here? Yeah. Are you worried about like radiation or anything like that? Like, have you heard about radiation from Fukushima yeah. and all that? No. Doesn't bother you at all? Can I take a picture of it? Sure. We have this thing that's like a Geiger counter. It's like a radiation meter or whatever. I mean, I don't know, you know, because I'm not really well. I've read a little bit of that yeah. going on. Is it true? Maybe yes, maybe no. Does the government lie? Yeah, of course. <laughs> See, <laughs> people don't believe the government. That's more what this is about. That people don't trust our institutions than like, you know. Yeah, the yeah. facts and figures that they that, that are out there. Yeah, so I don't know. You worried about radiation out here? I got a Geiger counter. I'm trying to check out the counter. Oh, that's <laughs> cool, man. Why do you think people are so scared about radiation? It's, I mean, it's so low. It's like oh, it doesn't even register I, barely. I know. You've seen the articles on yeah. Facebook. You yeah. know, very alarmist stuff. They put like deformed fish and stuff, but. The fish is healthy here, you can tell, you know. If there's always an article to freak you out. Know, That's the I thing, know. though. Yeah, yeah. So you've so got to trust the scientists. If you're going to believe everything, you're going to go crazy. I know. Man. Okay. There's nothing. Point one one. Grab it. Yeah, that's meant to be. That's what happens when you smoke. Most radioactive things out here. Okay, here. Kelp. What? Point one zero. Oh. Huh. Nothing. So we bought this Geiger counter. Is this officially a Geiger counter or is it, uh, this is some amateur stuff? No, it looks like a real Geiger counter. Okay, so, I mean, but is there any reason for anybody in their normal everyday lives to own one of these things? No. <laughs> so, so why do they sell them? Because people are paranoid, right? <laughs> so how does this thing work? Well, and, the, and show me how this works yeah. and what it detects and, and then you'll tell me the truth, which is, <laughs> I have a feeling it doesn't make a difference and the, we just wasted our money. I guess the simplest question I have is, when I'm looking at this thing, when should I be scared when it says what? It would yeah. need to be showing tens of thousands of them. Tens of thousands? Yeah. So it would be... Uh, instead of, it would be 10,000 point instead of something. Point one, yeah. 10,000, so it doesn't even have room for that. Well, that's, I don't think it goes above, I think it can go up to 1,000. And over 10,000 is when I really should be scared yeah. for a prolonged period of time or for a, even a quick exposure. Well, if 10,000 on this, you, it would be, you could be there for several minutes with that being. And I'd be all right. You'd be okay. And the amount that we're seeing in the fish on the Pacific beach these days, how much would that be? Where would that fall it's on the scale? way down here somewhere. <laughs> Way it's below actually, the I was, recommended I, I safety line. I looked it up line. this morning because I, you know, a couple of people mentioned it to me, yeah. not just you. Yeah, yeah. Actually, some, one of my students mentioned it to me, and they're finding something that's it's about basically one, next to zero. It's about one one hundredth of what you would get from a trip in an airplane from here to New York. Wow. When you take that trip, where, what, where's that radiation coming from? The space. Just yeah. outer because space. you're getting closer to space. You, you've gone up through the atmosphere to where it's thinner. So you have less. So every time you take a flight, you're being exposed to yeah. to radiation, yeah. higher radiation levels. Yeah. Your colleague was asking me about whether we should worry on this coast. Right. And I said, no, we shouldn't worry on this coast. So then why is everybody, I mean, particularly like the one place I keep hearing it is about like eating sushi. You know, you don't want to eat sushi that's been in the Pacific. So there was a YouTube video of a guy walking around up in Northern California with a, yeah. with a Geiger counter and he walks right up to the beach and the thing goes nuts. And this has been seen millions of times. What was going on there? It's natural radiation in the sand because anybody can put anything on the internet. Right. And so, you know, we're all learning how to judge what's real and what isn't real on the internet. That's going to be the great thing about educating our next generation, I think, is how do you know what's real on the internet? Especially adds, about Justin Bieber, because that's yeah, what we all that need adds to, know to the paranoia, right? <laughs> you smoke one cigarette, you got 30 milligrams. So that's, more, that's about as much as you get from a chest x-ray. So one cigarette doesn't do much damage. But my son, for example, smokes two packs a day. And every day I tell him, I wish you'd stop smoking. 
<laughs> All this is making me nervous, so I need to smoke a cigarette. <laughs> the radiation makes yeah. her so nervous that she wants to go more. smoke some more. I don't smoke a pack of day so it's okay. I'm here at Cal State University Long Beach where they're actually starting to measure how much radiation is in the kelp that's in the ocean and whether or not Fukushima is actually going to have an effect on that. I'm trying to pick up a starfish, but they're way more buff than I am. How about this? Mm, feels squishy. Or this one. I just want to pick up a starfish. Turn your hand like that. Yeah. Now they'll grab onto your hair. Ah! Do you see that? Because <laughs> <laughs> they, have, they have little claw-like structures that actually keep things from landing on them. Because, and they'll it, what, keep like, so themselves they, clean. That's so cool. Here, you want to do that? Here, Yunch. Put your hand like this. Like this, with your hair up right there. Yeah, like that. I'm really hairy too. Okay. Whoa. Can you feel Whoa. it? Do it with one of the arms. You could use starfish to like wax yourself. <laughs> <laughs> As these guys have probably been telling you, you know, I've been just sort of looking into why everybody's so freaked out about radiation and um, if we should be scared about radiation that's coming from Fukushima, is that something that's concerning to you at all? I wouldn't, I, I don't think we should be fearful. What we hope to do by Kelp Watch is to supply the public with Ooh. information. <laughs> Uh, we hope to supply the public about with it. Or when we talk about kelp watch, mm -hmm. what are we? What are we exactly? Are we watching for? Well, we're using kelp basically as our sentinel organism to detect the presence of these radioisotopes that are coming from Fukushima. If this has currently natural occurring radiation in it, where does that come from in the ocean? What creates it? Why is it well, there? Well, it's just naturally occurring on Earth ever since the Earth was formed. After this guy has a chance to snack on that, mm -hmm. when Kelp Watch is over, would you would you be eating his gonads? I don't eat urchin gonads anyway, <laughs> so the answer is no. Okay, but regardless, <laughs> we've been hearing about this culture of mistrust, which apparently breeds paranoia and hysteria. So we're here at a neuroscience center at UCLA. Why is there such a culture of paranoia and mistrust among the public, especially with Facebook viral posts and? people commenting on sorts of, all sorts of things that aren't necessarily true. Like, why do we have this culture of mistrust? Like, why are people so paranoid all the time and not eating sushi? So, well, you know, we, we are social animals. Mm -hmm. So we respond to other people's cues. It could be verbal, mm -hmm. it could be nonverbal. And there is a lot of negativity and fear in the world. Right. And there's reason to be fearful. I mean, there's all kinds of terrible things that are going on. But as you mentioned, we've got the new technology that spreads this stuff very rapidly. Mm -hmm. And even though this phenomenon of social contagion has been around forever, right. uh, we're seeing it accelerated by the new technology. Well, with social media and the internet and the rapid fire spread of information, do you think like these ideas could spread much more quickly than they used to? I think or in do. a different way? I think they do. It's, it's not all negative. <laughs> You're not going to get me to say it's all negative. It's really, it's both. What's an example of a positive mass hysteria that we've experienced? Well, I think that, uh, you know, a, a lot of people <laughs> will take, you know, there'll be a new fad, there'll be a new craze everybody's excited about. It may be something in the music world, mm -hmm. it may be a film, uh, there can be lots like of... Justin Bieber, like that mess hysteria that's that's around. A, that's a positive. <laughs> that's a, is that a positive or a negative? Wow. This? Yeah. Cool. What kind of fish is that? It's a smelt, wow. jack smelt. It's a smelt and there's, it's not even going up at all. It's no. 0 .10. <laughs> Let's do it again, let's bring it back out. I, wow. That's neat. Okay, okay, let me let me do this. Let me take a picture of yeah. the guy you're counting on the fish. Because you want to yeah. show you, put it I on your Facebook. Put it on my Facebook. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this, guy, this guy's fighting back <laughs> against the misinformation. Because everybody on on the internet is trying to freak everybody out about you know, it's what? ridiculous, man. That is something else. Here we go. 0 0.09. To be dangerous, it needs to be 10,000. Can I touch it or no? You may, yeah, actually. Go for it. Ooh, Can you wear it? You feels it itchy. Take it. <laughs> it, feels, it feels itchy. Put it on. Well, you, is this itchy? Superman doesn't no, feel feels itchy. Itch. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Superman has He's no... He's got that uh, super skin. Didn't you see the movie? They tried to get that needle exactly. into him. It just... <laughs> Poison Ivy? Forget yeah, it. Exactly. Superman doesn't get... It's not going to work. As one of the driving forces behind Mythbusters, why, what are, what's, why are people so fascinated with, like, what might not even be true? The world's a confusing place, I think, is the big deal. And, um, and there's so many different stories. And as the media proliferates, yeah. they get messages and they get ideas and they get facts, 
which may or may not be facts, from so many different sources. So it's become more and more difficult to sort out fact from fiction, to figure out what's true, what's not. Especially since if you go back in time, you realize we now know our government has lied to us. Right. So it, it's sort of like when you find out, oh man, there's no Santa Claus, there's no Easter Bunny. There's no Santa Claus? Yeah, and our, our culture, I'm sorry. <laughs> Why do people show up at the Ripley's Believe It or Not Museum, do you think? Well, I think they're, they're curious. They want to see what's true and what's not true. They like to be amazed at uh, astonishing things that are true. Um, and Ripley's, Ripley's is a name brand that's yeah. sort of built itself up over the years and people trust it. So, but what about this story that we're looking into, which is, is there radiation coming from Fukushima or not? Like you said, on the internet you get all kinds of things. You can get that we're all going to die if you eat a fish that right. shows up in Santa Monica, which is right here in LA, or you can eat anything you want and you're going to be great. Um, but science is science, right? Like. Well, science is science, except that's part of the problem with the proliferation of media. And scientists suffer from being scientists, partly because they're bad communicators, and partly because they're not willing to shade the truth. Large institutions are always trying to protect themselves, so they do things like say, no, no, we're not, we're not tapping every phone call, we're not listening in, we're not reading every email, and so then it does throw doubt on things like, is the, uh, is the food source safe? Right. Are the fish coming from Japan glowing in the dark? So far it's pretty safe out here. You guys don't worry, there's no radiation out here at the, at the pier. No radiation guys, everything's cool. Back to work. Everybody's safe. Checking you for radiation. You're good. 0.14. He's good. <laughs>